wow, that was a quick queue. I guess there's a lot of people on tonight. All right, an E4 game. Wow. Bug house. <laughs> I. I. <laughs> I I played against um uh <laughs> Drew, Drew up uh, last night. Um, that's funny. That's funny. He 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 had a winning he had a winning end game, and then I um I blundered. Okay, so he's gonna play this line. Whereas this, 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 and then the knight comes out, and I okay, I've actually played this against a couple, a couple viewers before. We we spent a lot of time looking looking at or playing this against me. Um, one uh, to Tobify was we we're, we we're playing, or he he beat me in a in a bond cloud game. Um. No, no. <laughs> Definitely not an affiliate. Uh you can you can set up a like a tip page. Danish game is that is that what this is called? Okay. So I think I think it's just here. Okay. And then I then I, I believe C seven. Or uh, e6, sorry, it's not even close to c7. I, I believe this is the the right move here, because the the bishop usually comes out to this square, and then I might go for this idea. We'll see, we'll see. I played I played this a, a bunch against like uh, Locutus. I think played this against me a couple times. Okay, if I play d5 right now, let's let's think about this for a second. Probably can't. Do I play? Okay, d5 takes takes. No, this this doesn't work yet. Doesn't work yet. I can support it with the knight though. Knight here, and then I mm, maybe I won't go for this idea. I could go for a pin, but I think he just pushes that back. And I end up on this diagonal. Hmm. Oh my my. Oh hey hey. Let's see. I I think I, I think I want to go for this and this, just to support this square. I don't know if h6 is an idea eventually here, but we're, we're going to go for it. Going to go for this e7 move. So if I play d5, takes, 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 I'm still short. Maybe I can go for this idea and Finchetto this way. Okay. Maybe f6 here. No, f6 doesn't make sense. I still run I still have problems. Mm. This, this. See the the problem is though here is I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a real hard time developing. Well okay, maybe this, this, and then here. And then I'll set up a I'll set up a knight on on uh, and blockade the pawn, and not even worry about pushing d5 yet. H6. If he takes, then I'll take with the uh, with the bishop, of course. Any moment. Wait, no, 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 I can't I can't play knight here. I'm pinned. Yeah, okay. Uh oh, okay, he he relinquishes the pin. So now I actually could go with this idea. 
I could go with the uh, the night out idea. Night G6. Electric guitar. And then blockade and then yeah, go go for these ideas. I mean it seems it seems reasonable. I, I really don't know much theory in this line. Uh apparently the, the Danish gambit. Um so I'm just gonna try to set up this outpost. And probably not even play d5. Maybe I'll even play d6. I play d6 to support this knight. Just just keep the bishop close to home here. Okay, so now now I need to decide. I could I could go bishop to e7. I am up a pawn, right? So if I can hold on and just kind of hang out and get just get development going and then try to try to press here. I think I'll be doing okay. Because he doesn't have any like pawn breaks or anything yet. I definitely want to keep the bishop, you know, in, in front of, or not in front of, but behind this pawn in case I either uh, d5 or d6. Um, just something to think about in expansion. So far, I think. The the only downside that I've had so far is I've I've moved I've moved my knight twice. Okay, so okay, it makes sense, right? Just hammering just putting a rook on an open file. Never a bad idea. Now I think castling is, is gonna be is gonna be the move here. I could go for this knight. No, I think I think just castling is is going to be the move. Okay. Old, but I'm not that old. Young, but I'm not that bold. <laughs> this song's old. I remember hearing this on the radio in like high school. Okay, so he wants to put a rook on this file. That's that's the whole that's the whole point of this move. Um, I guess also protecting this pawn another time, and maybe even looking for something like this. Maybe I play, um, I go like this to prevent to prevent either of these pieces from jumping, and then go for a tempo development of my light squared bishop. Um, And then, I guess the question is what I want to do with um, my queen. I guess that's more of a long-term question at this point. Let's see. I think I think this this a six b five expansion makes sense. Kind of like this, um, like a semi slav type expansion and it vacates this diagonal and right now a6 does does restrict um two of white's pieces from from good jumping squares Th this knight in particular the only downside of this move is allowing a hole here potentially well it is it is a hole um it's currently guarded by the queen but it could always become a problem but yeah i think i think a6 is a decent move I can definitely be wrong here. Well, <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, the, the the whole point of this gambit is a quick rollout from white here. But I have I'm up a pawn, of course, um, and I have a pretty solid position at this point. There's no real weaknesses yet. My my pawn structure is pretty flexible right now. But I am kind of looking to commit this way and then attack this e pawn. Maybe I should put the knight out here first. 
Like a6 first is fine to, to try to restrict these two pieces. But maybe, maybe I put, let's see, which knight belongs here? I guess the question is, do I want to leave a knight on the queen side or nah? Do I want to focus more on rolling out to the king side for defense? I, I guess it's kind of likely, though, that he ends up take capturing this knight and then it gets replaced. Um, so either way, it might end up the same, but I don't think it's a bad thing to think about. There's always the possibility of your opponent not capturing a piece. Hmm. This is the first time that he's really stopped to think for a little bit. Okay, so he's going for the exact same expansion that I'm thinking about. But I hit first, right? Here, here, here. Because I, I want to... If I play b5 first, I hit with tempo. And both of my knights control control this e4 push right now. So that, that's not something that, that, he can, that he can play next move. So e4 is not an immediate threat, so the blockade's not something that needs to immediately happen. I could go b5, bishop to a2, b5, bishop a2, and then jump in with the knight. Hmm. Maybe maybe I slide my rook to h or to b to b8 in case of an a4 push and also to support the eventual b bishop on b7. But I think I think b5 here is it's kind of like the if you say a then you must say b. You know, I've I've made this a6 move in order to make this b5 move to develop this bishop out this way. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, playing b5, the only drawback is it's a little bit of a committal move, like there's gonna be some holes. Um, but I gain a tempo on this light squared bishop. I mean, I guess he could sack, but I don't think there's anything gaining out of that. Okay, so to decide which one of these two knights I want to put on D on E5, I need to consider what pieces have. If I move this knight, then my bishop comes with. Um, it opens the diagonal for my bishop, the diagonal that I just spent time creating. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm down I'm down for the game afterwards. Um, Sketch, A B C one two three. Are are you in chat here? Um, okay. Again, I could develop this piece first. Okay, what? Okay, back back to the train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> Which knight is better placed right now? This knight could jump like this to access this hole. Um, if if b4 is played, that could be very useful. This knight doesn't really have a lot going on, other than holding down some of the dark squares around my king. 
But the bishop is doing a fine job with that. So I think if I develop this and then and then play my Hmm. Maybe I just go for this idea immediately. No, develop a piece. Bring another piece into the game here. Get my rooks one step closer to connecting. And then I think aim for this hole. And again, maybe play rook to b1 here. This queen needs to be doing something. I guess I guess it's defending this pawn for now. Is very likely a rook's coming to the D file. It makes a lot of sense to have a rook on the D file here. Right. So now, okay, another benefit of having a knight on this square is it guards the the D seven pawn. If I play this knight out and there's not a capture, I could take here and then and then put my other knight here to open up the diagonal and pin the pawn. And then maybe look for these d5 pushes. So e5 still isn't a threat, so maybe I put my rook on b1 now. Or even to C. Hmm. Is it more important to put a piece on E5 or to put or to bring another rook into the game? That's kind of like the essential question I'm answering right now. There's not really a working sacrifice this way with the pin. Maybe rook to c to support this move. I think I will play that. Rook a to c with c8. Rook a c8. Just just um, in preparation of getting a bish or a knight to uh, to c4 to have more support that direction. And the rook is supported by the bishop here. This bishop is loose though. This this bishop's a little loose, but it's also hard to get at. Okay. So as far as the Danish gambit goes, I feel like I'm in a pretty okay spot. White hasn't built too big of an attack yet. I feel like I'm still holding. I think this, the more I look at it, the more I believe that the G knight belongs on E5. To leave open the option of the A5, C4 jump for the other knight. Because these are the two ways to get at the, at the C4 square. And I want both of my knights to be able to achieve that. And of course if here and takes then it's no problem because I'm still on my way. But we'll see how white decides to continue here. He could maybe go for a rook doubling attempt on honestly either file. But I view my job right now to just kind of Let's see, where's my palm majority at? My palm majority is in the center. Um, maybe I'm not necessarily doing a great job of using that palm majority. But if I can get a knight to these two squares where they're supporting each other, I think that can be pretty strong here positionally. This bishop has a good diagonal. 
this bishop is defending well. This rook, I the the queen the queen here is making me a little bit nervous. Maybe mm, I kind of want to trade off my the dark square bishops, and then use my queen on the dark squares. That might be a piece trade off that I should be looking for here. <laughs> Well, we'll see how uh, Juyop responds to this. At, th at this point, he's got he's got all this development that he could ever want. Like the the setup is achieved. It's just a point of attacking now and using that setup, and then it's my job to try to defend it and then use my extra pawn to win the game. Yeah, let's let's see how this continues. My my king feels pretty safe here. I don't see anything that's like an immediate devastating attack. So we will see. This is probably the longest he's thought so far. So he he's he's coming up with a long term plan right now. And we'll we'll see we'll see if he if he decides to join the chat for the analysis afterwards too. Um, he did last night. We got random queued against each other two days in a row now. It's kind of funny. Okay. So now this, I feel, kind of leads into my plan. This makes my plan a little bit stronger, a little bit more forcing. With playing this knight here, if takes and takes, then this queen's under attack. And I'm defending here. Hmm. Ninety five if takes takes okay ninety five if the queen drops back then I go for this plan Well no then I actually have to play uh D six I have to play D six to add the extra defender and this bishop to the party because if I move my knight off to A five there's a capture here Well there's a capture here so I would have to take here first, actually. That doesn't work. I would have to play. I would, well, I have to play d6 before I went out, because of takes takes. And I'm hesitant, of course, to put my queen on c7 with the with the rook already living there. Hmm. But yeah, knight knight g to e5. Seems good here. Let's go ahead and play that. Continue with the plan. Conveniently adding a defender here, attacking here, and challenging the f3 knight. But yeah, I, th I, think, I think we're doing all right here in defense. How's everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? Enjoying your Saturday, hopefully. Hmm. There's still no takes here because I still have this pawn.
This bishop's about to get into the game. I just kind of need to deal with this. Um, this queen is my least favorite position piece right now. But at least, at least the queen is in front of the rook here. So if there's if there's trades here, then I, it comes out. You know, it's just trades. I'm not going to be losing material. <laughs> Time's starting to even out a little bit. I guess it's still a three minute difference. Just capture. There's really no point of um, making a long stint out of it. Now, bishop here feels strong. Um, bishop to f6. Hitting hitting this, this, uh, this skewer, and there's a huge discovery with a check here. So that could lead to some tactical problems. If I go here and he plays like this, then I still have this, right? Let's see. Where can this go badly? Let's find a better move for black than f4. Bishop f6. Now this queen does form a battery in this direction. But I'm not scared of a queen trade here. Takes, takes. Yeah, I'm just. That does no, 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 because no, the knight defends the pawn, so I'm still good if the queen trade happens. I'm not super scared of a bishop being on this diagonal at least temporarily. It does take the bishop off of this diagonal, but yeah, I think I think this could be stronger. Especially with um, the knight coming into this to c4. So yeah, bishop f6 is definitely a strong candidate move here. Let's see if there's anything that's better. I could play d6, but I don't know. That doesn't feel as strong. I think bishop on f6 is just a better developing move. And these bishops control... All the sexual squares. They're both on the long diagonals. And this knight's not getting trapped or anything. And yeah, again, if f4, there's no problems. So it seems reasonable to play bishop to f6 here. Let's go ahead and do it. There's tactical advantages with discovered checks, of course. Um... And then just a positional advantage of this is a pretty hot diagonal right now. <laughs> no, there's there's no F three here to support the pawn. I still need to solve the problem of my queen and this rook. These two are the pieces that I need to improve the most. My my three miners in this rook are doing pretty well, I would say right now. Okay. So now Hmm, this isn't a move that I considered. Let's see. What if I played What if I played rook to c6 to hit the queen, bring the queen to c7 and even consider tripling on the c file and also providing more support for this base pawn on d7? Let's see. Rook here. The downside is I cut this diagonal, but I'm not really trying to win this pawn right now anyways. Only my bishop is hitting it and my pieces aren't positioned around it. So rook c6, where does the queen go? 
queen doesn't have a lot of squares. The queen can go to this square, or the queen can go all the way back. And if the queen goes all the way back, then I play this move and just just open up the can of worms here on this um, on the C file and just really go for it. I think I think this this could be good. This 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 rook c six move. Let's think of other moves. It's okay, so the, the d six isn't a possibility here. I have knight move that's attacking the queen, but just takes and takes, and then I lose a pawn. Not super super into losing this pawn. Here here here. It seems like like a pretty good semi-forcing rollout you know at least the move the the first move is a forcing move and then i could i could always adjust um where i'm on where i'm going on the diagonal here rook c6 am i missing anything are there any knight moves any bishop moves so if i go rook here there is bishop no there's not bishop there i just take it is there a sack Let's say knight takes. No, then I just take the queen. Well, okay, bishop there, I just take the queen. I don't know. I don't know, man. Sometimes I talk myself out of good moves because I see threats that don't exist. The like the ghost lines. But I'm sure I'm sure I'm not the only person that does that. <laughs> And again, th this knight is an absolute monster. Absolute monster. Just, just a great position from the blockade here. And now, now I get my queer rollout plan. So yeah, can we go here or here? Let's let's think about these two moves for a second. So if queen here, I feel like that's like it's it's not it's not having a fun time over there. I can't push it out with the pawn because then then I lose the b pawn. I could I could drop the bishop back to try to kick it off this diagonal, make it go back to the light squares here, kind of banish it. Hmm. If queen all the way back, then maybe... Well, no, I can't... Well, I have to, I have to rotate my queen and then maybe put a rook on, on the D file to support the pawn. And, well, I could, no, I can't play, yeah, if I have the queen on c7, I could play d6 to get two supporters on it, or two defenders, however you want to consider it. Okay, queen does go all the way back to d1. So I was thinking here, well, okay, I could play for this, but no, again, like, like, like we were saying, it drops, it drops the d pawn. So I've, I've decided that's already a bad move. So queen to c7 and then rook to d, d8. Seems like a pretty solid option. The queen's not doing much from here. There's not really any great knight jumps. There's actually none. He has to go backwards, if anything. And yeah, unless he wants to sack. This bishop could try to get active over here. Actually, yeah, that's something to consider. If I go here, bishop here, to um, pin the knight, that could be a problem. But then d6, to support the knight and break the pin. Um, okay, so I believe queen to c7 is going to be a pretty decent move here. I don't know if I'm going to get into any trouble... Here, I, I this rook has tons of support, so I don't think, and there's of course not a pawn push to get at it, 
So queen c7 feels like a pretty, a pretty good move. Okay, I do actually have to really go to the bathroom, um, so I will be back soon. I'll be I'll be right back. It won't be long, um, but yeah, see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> and Juhoff hasn't made a move yet either, so even better. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let's get a train of thought going again. Hmm. So now, my rook is the last piece that needs to come into the game. And I have the option of going to the D or the C file if I think that I can get enough going on down the C file here. Now, as a note... C1 is very heavily guarded just by kind of convenient setup of uh, the bishop and the queen here. So maybe, I, well, I don't, I shouldn't like completely disregard, um, completely disregard anything happening on the C file, but as of now, it's going to be pretty hard, excuse me, to get a tactic. But again, this and this supports. Maybe I will put my rook on the D file. I think the D pawn is just really in need of some support to kind of free up my other pieces to go and do wonderful things. My my F8 rook is going to be the one to uh, to play the supporting role here, while all of his buddies go out and do great things. Okay. Knight c4. Yeah, I think after the rook gets to the d file, knight c4 is going to be a good a good continuation. Um cuz cuz once my knight gets here, he might just have to capture that like right away. And then I get pressure this way. And then I get that I get the pressure going um, down the C file. There's going to be a lot of threats to worry about for for White here. Hmm. This knight is definitely my loosest piece, but it is defended twice. I guess the bishop is technically the loosest piece in here. But it's a little hard to get at. He doesn't really have any pawn breaks. But I think if he plays a4... What, what if he does play a4? Let's think about that for a minute. Maybe I just push past and then go in with the knight. Right, and takes, takes, and now this rook forks on the fourth rank. Definitely some options there. Hmm. I don't think d5 is really a move that I'm going to be considering for at least for a while. I'd rather try to win this pawn outright through just like creating pressure on it. Um, I 
I could maybe, after it takes this way, put my dark square bishop here to uh, shut down as, as my next blockader for the square. Let's see. I actually, I actually am starting to gain a little bit of a time advantage at this point, which is not normal for me. I play, I play very slow, and I suck at blitz. <laughs> I'm gonna get this just set up for later. I do I do like to use chess.com for the um the one free analysis a day. I like their their UI a little bit better. That's really it. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, he's putting a lot of thought into this next move. He he's had to move his queen four out of the last five moves. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I, I have my general plans worked out as far as what I want to do. And I'm not really seeing anything else obvious. Down to 11 minutes. Okay. So he pins the knight. And I had I had a plan for this, right? Oh yeah, it was it was D it was D6. Was my idea. Just break the pin. Keep this keep this pawn defended. If he takes and then I take with the bishop, that's no problem. I've been wanting to trade off the dark square bishops anyways. Um, so having an uncontested dark square bishop I think is gonna be good. Um, and then rook, rook to d8 is really what I'm looking, looking towards in the next move here. My, my pawns are pretty compact here, at least on the king side. Um, just real flexible. I can decide to push whatever color squares I want to. That's nice. The only commitments that I have is over here on the queen side. This is kind of a hard position to attack, I would say. Because this bishop, yeah, it's on the same diagonal as the king, but there's no real way to get at, at these pawns, especially with this blockade set up on e5. There is still a lot looking at c c1. Hmm. 
Hmm. But my uh, playing viewers prep they, has has definitely come into has definitely come in handy in this game. Because <laughs> I've I faced this what they call it Danish gambit I guess is what I learned learned today. Um, but yeah, they 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 played this a few times against me. I've lost every time, so. Maybe maybe I'll have I'll have one win in the record book on the uh, the Danish gambit. Might be nice. <laughs> Down to eight and a half, which could be significant here. Hmm. Now I'm definitely interested to go back and analyze this one. You know, I think I was supposed to play H6 way earlier than I did. Okay. So now there is this check, but then block. So I think I want to just come over this way. He'll probably play King H1. Hmm. I can't. Well, I I can't. I can't. I can't continue with this because I hit the queen immediately. He can step up though, because this doesn't come with the um. But then, but then I give it this check, and I just place king h1. Well, okay, I also hit this pawn at the same time. So yeah, rook, rook to, rook to fd8 here. Seems pretty dang reasonable. I don't know if f3 was a hundred percent required at this point. Just because I'm not I'm not putting any immediate pressure on the e pawn, it's a good like safety move. But now but now I might be able to uh, work up some tactical ideas. Um, now now all of my pieces are set and I'm the one that's ready to do the attacking here, and I get the advantage of being up a pawn. So I guess I guess now if this trade though I'm not hitting I'm not hitting the e pawn. So I guess there, there's definitely some foresight with that. Maybe I could consider d5 at that time and trade off trade off this central pawn 
I'm gonna start working myself towards an end game. Likely with with this move first. Actually, knight here also defends the pawn, so um, that works out. It's amazing how like when you have your pieces on good squares that things just kind of work out in your favor. Even if they're not 100% planned from the beginning. Okay, interesting. So if I go here now, I go here, he takes. Wait, I go here, he takes. I take. He takes. I take. Then he takes here. Then I take. He takes, I take. And then I get two pieces for a rook and a pawn. <laughs> and I'm hitting, I'm hitting here and I'm hitting here twice. And I'm ready to mop up these pawns. But the queen has infiltration is getting can give actually she can't well there's a check and a capture threat at the end of that hmm if i take here he takes here that's no that's no good that's no good cuz c4 doesn't work anymore so c4 bishop takes pawn takes Pawn takes. No. No. C4. Bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, pawn takes. No, because then he just takes here. And this pawn becomes isolated. Knight C4. Okay, let's look for other moves before knight C4. Let's not get fixated on knight C4 too hard here. G4 or G5 G5 takes six takes six takes takes hmm hmm okay Hmm. Here, here, takes, 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 takes. Check and take, so see that that's that's the problem though is I lose this bishop at the end of it, and this this rook is actually defended. So at least this little tactic doesn't work. Now I do have this check. I do have the check. Okay, come on, let's think. How can I incorporate this? Check if blocks this way. Then I can't really do much there. So I I want to play. Can I can I stop the threats if takes takes? Well then I have to take with the pawn at this point. Well no because because this this still falls. No, wait, no, 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 because then, then I have three. Then I have three. 
Okay. So I has a take with the pawn right away. Right, so here if takes, then takes. If here, there's no takes here because I'm hitting the queen. If here, and if takes this way, I take this way. So here takes, takes with the pawn. Takes with the pawn. And then, and then, and then I'm, I'm secure here, and I'm going to start building pressure this way, especially after check, and then, and then I can win this pawn. Okay, so knight, knight c4, knight c4. And then if takes, I have to take with the b pawn, otherwise I have a bad day. I am also hitting this pawn. Taking with the bishop could be strong. Hmm. I still I still have eleven and a half minutes here. And I think this is this is a point where I definitely need to find like a few really good moves and I think I can put this game away. This pawn, this pawn is pinned right now. What about if this and I just come back? Okay, so then I have to take with the B pawn. We've already thought about this, so no sense in hesitating. Now I do have to continue defending. This is this is kind of a weak pawn. It does clamp down the queen side. But at the same time, it's a pretty weak pawn. Okay. So, then I just take here, right? Or take this way? So, if takes, takes. Takes. Okay. Th this isn't a line I, I considered here. Which is bad. If I take this way, and he takes this way, then I take here, he takes here, I go check, he goes here, and then I move, okay, okay, let's think. So I take this way. He can't move the queen because, well, okay, so he moves the queen over to the B file. Then I could take, 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 and then take this pawn. Which I think is, you know, it's gonna, I'm going to come out ahead there. If I take this way, take this way, if the queen moves like this, then I could take, I could take here. And if the queen takes this way, then I take, and then take, and then that's an exchange. I have a check, the queen, or the king has to step up like this. I don't know if that's, if that's all worth it. But I think this is the correct move. If here, if takes, and takes, and takes, I get check. Then yeah, I'm definitely up there. I'll take this way. I think I'm going up a piece here. It might not be true. But I think I'm heading in, in that direction. Takes, 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 then takes and my my rook is defended by the bishop here so there's not too many terrible things going on
I think I think he might have miscalculated this and the little bit of um, time pressure that he's under. Now he gives up here. Good game. Uh, yeah, you can um, just challenge me on the website, Drumstick. Or if you want to put in your username, I'll, I can send a challenge to you. Um, it's up to you. Uh, but for, for right now, we're going to go ahead and look at this, um, this game that we just played. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we, we've all been there, Julia. Yeah, yeah, this, this, this was kind of like a sneaky, a sneaky setup there. But yeah, good, good game, good game. All right, let's, actually, I'm going to take the PNG and put it into the uh, chess.com here. All right. Yeah, it was it was kind of um, kind of I ironic that that you played that because I've I've played that against a bunch of viewers. Okay, drumstick. Oh, it went away for some reason, drumstick. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll catch it here after um after this analysis. <laughs> yeah, I okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll accept. I'll accept it uh, after this. Oh boy, this is, this is going to be a one-sided game. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the, the the only thing that I like Chess.com for is their analysis, um, and I get I get one I get one a day, so I might as well use it. Hmm. I mean, honestly, a, a fairly clean game by both sides. <laughs> I'm I'm super bad at blitz. All right. Um Okay. There's one 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 mistake in here. Okay. So yeah, I played the Sicilian. Um I it's just an opening that I like. Let's see. Where's the board flip? Oh, that's right. I got to get rid of this and then flip the board. Okay. So, yeah, he goes for, this is, okay, this is a smith Mora gambit. All right. That I've, I played a bunch of these against viewers, like, last week. So, I had some idea of what was going on. <laughs> here, here. And then, yeah, yeah, this, 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 is a, this is a move that I learned from last week. Okay. So I was saying to play d6 pretty early on here. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of it's kind of like the thing, right? Like if you accept a gambit, it's like you're up a pawn, and now it's it's on you to try to to just defend, and then if you get to the end game, then you get to be up a pawn. It's just like surviving your way through it. Okay, h6 here is is the mistake. H6 is bad. What's the move here? What's a better move here? I can I considered playing um, F6. Let's see. Saying A6 is the move here to stop this to stop the knight from coming in. Of course, of course. Okay. Do you, do you watch um Damon Nardisky, uh, G up? Cause cause he he yeah. No okay he 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 says he says hook all the time but yeah I guess it's probably just like a general concept, but yeah he's good. Okay so yeah I missed this move. I yeah, I should have played H6 like way earlier. Castles, castles. Queen comes out. Now I get my H6. 
I kind of went for this 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 expansion idea to get the bishop to get the bishop rolling. And then yeah, and then yeah, you're going for the this kind of the same idea of expanding. Or I guess I guess your idea is more of um the limiting the restriction of of these two pieces. So yeah, kick the bishop, develop the bishop, develop the rook. Okay, that turned out to be the best move. I was debating between the B file and the C file here to, to lend support to the bishop. But I kind of had a long-term plan of trying to get a knight to C4. I wanted I wanted to, to first put a knight here as um, a blockading uh, piece. Uh, yeah, I was just saying this to support the um, the bishop and then maybe possible like a possible B pawn push. It's just a thought. I I go through a lot of bad ideas before I come up with the move I want to play. That that's why I can only play classical chess is because most ideas I have are terrible until I work them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is kind of the start of me just I, I got I got to push the queen around a little bit. Before it'll never happen. Yeah. But it could. <laughs> no. But yeah, yeah. Just just uh just dreams. That's all it is. So here takes takes. So now I get my knight here with the idea of the jumping to c4 eventually. Um, and then queen up. And then, is this a good move? Okay, this this is an okay move. I just thought, because, okay, there there's the tactical, the like immediate tactical threat of the discovered check. Um, well, not discovered check, but a discovery on the queen with a check. And then the, I felt that the bishop on this diagonal was pretty good. Pretty good. There's, there's a lot going on here. So when the queen steps forward, okay, and this this was the best move. I was trying to figure out how to get my rook or get my queen off of the D file. I just didn't like it have it having it lined up here. Um, so this this kind of yeah. I I honestly I missed this move. I wasn't even considering queen queen D six at all. Um. But yeah, it, it does it does block up the bishop, but honestly, it, it gives me kind of like a clear plan to work towards. Yeah. Yeah. And then yep, dropped all the way back. It's pretty much the only square. I, I noticed that, that um B B four and and D two were really the only two squares your queen could go to. I, I, it felt like a weird square to put it all the way out here, so. And then queen c7. Yeah, this is a move. I was thinking a lot here in this position. I thought I thought I had d6 here to break the pin, and then just add defenders to this pawn. And then at this point, I decided that I wanted to put. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to put my rook behind the pawn also, to just really support the crap out of that guy. And, and it also supports the knight. And this knight is actually really nice on this square to just blockade and control some of these light squares from the center of the board. So yeah, pawn up. Okay, it's saying that f3 isn't a bad move. I was wondering about this, because I guess it's like long-term defending the, the e-pawn. Because I was looking at stuff like, like this with, you know, takes and takes, and then eventually the bishop's going to be opened up here along with the rook. On the fourth rank, so f3 definitely shuts that idea down. Um, but I was trying to find a way of using this diagonal somehow, uh, attacking the king. Yeah, yeah, get get this knight in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's a move that that crossed my mind too. Drumstick, drumstuck. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Been mispronouncing it this whole time. 
So then, yep, bring the rook to the D file. I felt I felt that it was better here than on the C file, um, just because of how well guarded the C1 square is. Yeah, of course, Trump suck. Thanks, thanks for stopping by. Have a great night. All right, all right. Let's see. And then, yeah, I, f I finally achieved my dream of getting the knight to c4. Um, with the added benefit of hitting the queen, putting pressure on the b pawn, um, and if the b pawn moves, and the a pawn's weak. So. Um, yeah, it just, it felt, it felt right. Yeah.